Hello everyone, it's Phil Jones from Projector Reviews and joining me is Phil Boyle and today we're going to be talking about a Vava projector. So Phil, what projector are we talking about today? We're talking about the Vava Chroma, its model number is the SP003. Which is actually sitting back behind me there. So I had the opportunity to play it, spend some time playing with it and measure it and things like that. But Phil actually did the full review. So Phil, let's talk about some of the things about this projector that may be interesting to our viewers. It's a 4K ultra short throw tri-laser projector. In fact, it's one of the most affordable tri-laser projectors available on the market today. Uh, it's actually Vava's second generation. So they've had one prior to this that we have reviewed. Check it out on the website. But the first projector was incredibly popular. So we wanted to take it, an opportunity and look at the newer projector. And mm -hmm. one of the big things now because of HDR is wide color. And a uh, tri-laser um, projector or chrome projector with an RGB um, light source can actually reproduce colors that many flat panels cannot. Um, what's the color space that this is supposed to be able to, to reproduce film? It is, um, Vava says that it's 100%, 107% of the BT2020 color space. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that's that's its technical capability. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's pretty impressive, although you're not going to get there with you know current sources. But yeah, it is, it is every bit as powerful as every other tri-laser projector that, that we reviewed. And it's got a it's got a huge palette of colors to play with. While they don't call this a laser TV, this is what many manufacturers call laser TV. It's a it's a smart ultra short throw laser projector with a sound system. So let's talk a few, uh, about the other parts. We already talked about the laser part, um, mm -hmm. short throw. Um, how big of a screen is this rated for, and how, and, and how close can you be? Well, Vava claims that it can be as large of an image as 150 inches and um i tested it at 120 inches mm -hmm. i i think 120 inches was actually the sweet spot but 150 inches the top and then i think they list 80 as the bottom and at 80 inches the projector can be as close as i believe it's three and a half inches from the wall you know give or take an eighth of an inch there you can use it on a variety of sizes from 80 to 150. and right. um and the reason why they say that is because they try to get, they give you some ability to adjust the focus, but you can only adjust the focus so much. So if you if you you mentioned that if you played with it at the larger sizes, um, what happened to some of the the sharpness on the edges? Yeah, the the thing is is that um, you know I tested it at 100 inches and then I tested it on my I have a 120 inch ALR screen, mm -hmm. and. Uh, 120 inches, like I said before, is about as big as I would go because there is most notably on the top right side of the screen, the image is softer than the, you know, the rest of the screen. But in general, the top of the screen is less in focus than the middle and the bottom. So what I found myself doing was splitting the difference between the two. And that worked fine up to 120 inch, but when you start blowing it up on a bigger space, and that's what I did, I just blew it up bigger on the wall to confirm the focus uh, issue was still there. It just makes it more noticeable. Yeah. So for that reason, I really think that 120 inches is maximum, and I think it really shined uh, with the matched um, you know, Vava 100 inch screen. Yeah, and that's what I did. I actually watched it on a 100 inch screen, and the focus worked spectacularly. I mean, it worked really good. I could actually get really good focus on the top and the bottom. There's a little test pattern that comes up and you can adjust as a digital mm -hmm. focus adjustment. And, and, and you basically are trying to get the little checkerboard on the top on the top two corners to be the same sharpness as the checkerboard on the bottom two corners. A lot of laser projectors are sold with screens because that allows the manufacturer to focus it for that particular size. Because we have a projector that can work on a variety of screens then it does become a lot more challenging to be able to focus it on a variety of sizes. They do a pretty good job. So it yeah, it looked great at 100 inches. It really did. It looked great. Before we get off focus, the the fact that it's electronic and you can do it via the remote control makes a huge difference because you can get really close to the screen that way. Um, you're not doing it from the device itself. Obviously, there are, there are manufacturers that still, you know, some even still use manual focus um, levers. So that's that's great. 
So awesome. Now, what about the sound? Because remember, part of this is you got to have a good sound system. Tell me a little bit about yeah. the sound. So on the first generation ultra short throw projector, Vava partnered with Harman Kardon, and they've carried that partnership over into this projector. And that partnership with Harman Kardon really shows. The speakers actually are capable of not just getting loud, uh, but getting loud clearly. Obviously, it's not going to be subwoofer bass, but it is a decent amount of mid bass. It's uh, 30 watts times two uh, for the built-in audio. And it sounds really good. It, it's certainly not going to take the place of a, of a external audio system, a home theater system or a good sound bar. But if you don't have access to putting one of those on it, it's more than acceptable. It's got pretty decent sound, nice little boom when you need it. You know, yeah, it boom. sounds a lot better than a flat panel TV, that's for sure. And of course, oh, if absolutely. you want to connect it, it does have things such as arc output, so you can connect it to an AVR or a sound bar or something like that. Now, it's also supposed to be smart. So let's talk a little bit about the smarts and then what and what you discovered when you tried to utilize the smarts. So I'll preface this with saying that we're in communication with Vava right now, uh, hoping to resolve you know the issues that I had. But um, since this is where we're at, I'll tell you about my experience. So the projector, Vava makes a big deal about the projector has Android 9 in it. And what that means in this case is that they built their operating system on Android, but it's not like, Android TV or, or Android operating system like you would see on a projector that's fully integrated it. And it doesn't have access to the Google Play Store. So what Baba does is they provide users access to the Aptoid app store. And there you can get apps like Netflix and HBO Max, and, um, Paramount Plus, and then a variety of other you know non-entertainment apps. Mm -hmm. They've got quite a few, but Unfortunately, and this has kind of been my experience for the past year or so with Aptoid, mm -hmm. the applications that you get from Aptoid, it's sort of, you know, maybe they'll work, maybe they won't work. For me, I wasn't able to get any of the premium streaming apps to run. I wasn't even able to get Hulu on it. I tried to sideload it and it would crash. The only app that I would get to actually run was Amazon Prime, but Everything on the Prime app came across. It looked like it was either DVD resolution uh, or, you know, highly compressed uh, HD resolution. But either way, it was unwatchable. Yeah. So, so the the system runs on Aptoid. Um, Vava is aware that they need to um, to to make some adjustments to make it actually work. The nice thing about the fact that it's a smart projector, um, it could be fixed in the future via firmware update. We are. We'll keep an eye on it, and if we learn that they have resolved the issues with their smart capabilities, um, we will make sure that we let you know. But in the meantime, uh, we recommend that you probably utilize some sort of smart streaming box like an Apple TV yeah. or Roku to access your services, which many of you have. And the fact that those are 30 bucks to 100 and something bucks really should not be a deal breaker if you're looking for a projector with this type of light source and brightness at this particular price point. So yeah, I'm not gonna ding Vava. I'm not gonna ding Vava a lot about the Aptoid App Store not working because quite honestly, most people do have some type of HDR, excuse me, HDMI streamer, um, streaming device. So, you know, that's how most people are gonna use it. It's just it's just a little irritating that it didn't work. None of it worked. So back. Now let's talk a little bit about the about the overall picture quality. Um, what did you think of the picture, by the way? Well, uh, it's very colorful. Um, I mean, it's it's got all the hallmarks of a tri laser projector. It's got those brilliant um, deep reds, the uh, the and and very bright reds if you want them. It, it's got a lot of range to play with. So. With appropriate adjustment, it it looks really good. And good is subjective because you know there are a lot of people who kind of want that oversaturated look in their displays. Um, so what I think, you know, I don't if I don't like that, I like a more neutral picture. That's me. But it's got a lot of color. It's got a lot of color range, and and it actually it actually looks good. So which which picture mode out of the box did you think was probably the best? Um. Well, uh, you know, the filmmaker mode or the movie mode is is always your your best choice. Well, that's where I was at too. I was at the film mode, 
or custom because if you go to film or custom custom is basically film that you can customize so right those seem to be the, the the best now there's other modes for brighter rooms like if you're trying to pierce through lighting mm -hmm. through like bright lighting you may you may actually opt for something like standard but um but we thought that the film and custom modes were probably um the better of the two so let's talk a little bit about this over rich color so and I think what this has to do with is the projector has this amazing RGB um, light source, this trichroma light source that's capable of um, reproducing a gigantic box of crayons. Think of it as a giant triangle of colors. Well, a lot of the content you watch, that the the color that make the colors fountain knows that piece of content is in a little triangle. So when you say I want a hundred percent of red in this little triangle instead of giving you 100% of red in a little triangle, it gives you 100% red in the big triangle. So what happens is things like skin tones and regular muted colors look, look, look pretty good. They're not overly saturated. But then when you go into like a super bright red, like a rose, it is red, 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 red. And I think that has to do with the ability for the projector to track colors. So skin tones are pleasing, but a little too cool. The nice yeah. thing about it compared to the older model is this one actually has um, some adjustability. Think of it as one point white balance adjustment, which you can go in and adjust the red, green, and blue output of the laser light source and balance it out. So when, if you look in the review, you can see before and after, we could pretty quickly um, get a very, very good grayscale. So when you got it that way, the skin tones look great and most colors from moderate to to uh to mute it looked really really realistic it was just when we got into the super the super bright colors where they were way oversaturated but picture wise for a project of this of this price point picture's pretty good yeah i mean it, like they've got they've got all the tools for somebody to create a good picture and it actually has a decent a decent picture out of the box and it does as you said give you the ability to adjust it's not a giant robust cms uh system like you find on some projectors but there are projectors that don't offer you know any color management any ability to adjust rgb so you know kudos to them and you have to consider you know the the price you're getting this projector at and everything that it has on it a couple other things we've noticed was if you look at the projector you know projectors will have picture modes film, movie, standard, vivid, and things like that. And a lot of times each one of their modes, those modes have their own, think of them as adjustments, color, contrast, brightness, and everything else. So you can have, you can adjust each mode individually. If you go in and you're watching film and you decide you wanna adjust the brightness, you're, it actually puts you in customized. So think of it as those, if you wanna make any additional corrections, those corrections will be done in the customized mode, um, not under film. Film will still be film, but the, as soon as you do, as soon as you make an adjustment, it goes. Oh, you want to make a customized mode, and it goes over to customize. Um, so all of your uh, brightness, contrast, color adjustments, white balance adjustment is done under customize. So that's something that I thought you should actually we should actually talk about as well. Yeah, and that's actually one of the small things that I was a little concerned about on this because you've only got one custom mode. So you know, there's multiple types of content. Um, and before I realized what was going on, you know, I was making adjustments to say the standard mode and the projector was immediately bouncing over to custom and making the changes there. So once I was aware of it, um, then, you know, I, I was able to make an informed decision as to whether I really wanted to make that, those changes for this content, because exactly. it, it's then going to change your settings that you had in custom prior. So yeah. something to be aware of. Yeah. But a couple of tips. Um, if you want to, we said that the colors, a lot of colors at the extremes can be a little oversaturated. If yeah. you go in and they have a setting called chroma, which is their color, you can actually go in and turn, um, you can turn that down and and and, uh, uh, and mute it a little bit. So um, Phil turned it down a little more than me. Like I think the stand, the, 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 the wall setting is like 50. Um, yeah. After I calibrated, I had about 42, 43. And I think Phil had yours, you had yours set at 38 because you were yeah. looking at pre-calibration. Right, right. And I, I was actually able to get a really decent picture just by adjusting uh, the, 
you know, the projector's chroma settings. Um, obviously, uh, your, your uh, you know, tuned uh, picture is, is even better, so. Yeah, and then one more thing. Um, as you go through and you make that adjustment, we're talking about there's only one custom mode, or, or customized is what they call it. The nice thing is when you get in and you, and you adjust the white balance or grayscale, um, uh, once you did that adjustment for grayscale, for um, standard dynamic range, those are, that pretty much those settings also worked fine for HDR. So once you once you got it all lined up and you got that good even red green blue, um, that applied across all um, about across HDR and SDR. But overall, um, you can get the color. The colors uh, is pleasing out of the box, but not act overly accurate it's a little cool you can adjust it to get it to look a lot more lifelike but just know that vibrant colors are really 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 vibrant black level what, what do you what do you think about the black levels well you know black is hard to do we say this a lot um just like hdr it, it can be really hard to do with a projector i reviewed this with an alr screen and i really think that an alr screen is critical uh mm -hmm. to have when uh, when using this projector, in fact, uh, Baba makes a screen uh, that I reviewed for this that I used with this projector. They're saying that their dynamic contrast is uh, one million five hundred thousand to one. Mm -hmm. um, it gets decent um, detail in the black areas, but be mindful that the black areas are going to be very dark gray. Again, which is typical for a DLP projector, and these guys act; these guys actually do pretty well. Okay. You know, HDR performance was actually pretty good. Um, this projector does have HDR10; it does HDR10 and HLG. Um, so I, I was pleased with what I was watching on the HDR performance. It wasn't as dramatic of a difference between you know HDR and SDR on this projector as I've seen um, on others, but I think that just comes down to, again, tuning. So yeah, it was nice that they had it there and I, I could actually see a difference. Exactly, so this will be a great projector for someone who's looking for pretty much their first ultra short throw projector or just need a good projector for um, casual viewing in a, um, a living room or den or family room. Uh, do you get more performance if you step up to a more expensive projector, yes, but that is yeah. what is expected if you spend more money. Like I said, it's it's a it's, it's a good projector. I think that for those people whose price point they're they're looking for, um, it'll be a good solution for them. So, what's the price right now currently, Phil, for this projector? The MSRP, which is what we deal with, the manufacturer's suggested retail price, thirty four ninety nine, and generally MSRP is the highest you're going to see the projector, and most of the time. Um, a little lower, which is what makes this uh, a really compelling um, tri-laser projector at its price point. And there's one other thing we noticed um, when you go on the different sites, there are um, there's different brightnesses that are actually listed. Um, sometimes you'll see 2200, sometimes you see 2500. Yeah, and I, I don't know if you did testing for brightness in your um, in your uh, process, but when I was measuring for brightness, it actually came in you know, right between those two. So either it's a little under their, their suggested brightness or they've actually beat their suggested brightness by, you know, about 100 lumens. Yeah, so you were um, in that 2300 to 23 to almost 2400 range when you actually uh, measured it in your particular space. Yeah, yeah. Whether it's 2300 or whether it's 2500, that's more than enough bright to pierce through moderate ambient light and allow you to utilize it um, day or night. Colors are pleasing, um, could be more accurate, but you can fix them. The, um, uh, some colors are a little oversaturated. Blacks are on par with what you would expect for a projector that utilizes this imager and this type of light source. Um, sound system was really, really good. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, and you, it does have an ability to focus it to try to get get the most out of it depending on the screen size that you are using. Is there any other things you want to bring up about the projector? Um, well, I actually do have one more thing I want to say about it. Now, I want to give, I want to give Vava kudos for this. Um, you know, ultra short throw projectors, because of their design, they kind of all sort of look the same, right? They're, they're boxes. 
right? Mm -hmm. And you know, some manufacturers change the cloth and you know put metal on the front, and they really try, but in the end, they're they're kind of they're boxes. Mm -hmm. And Vava, the reason they call it a chroma is it's got this chrome work that goes around the sides and a little bit toward the front. Um, it's a very in-your-face design, and I think they found um, you know, a way to separate themselves uh, from other manufacturers. I think it's one of those love-hate things. I mean, either somebody's gonna look at it, they're gonna go, wow, or they're gonna go, wow. Uh, <laughs> but you know, kudos to them for really trying with design and coming up with something that is unique. It, it doesn't look like any other ultra short throw projector that I've reviewed. Excellent. All right, so thanks, Phil. So if you are looking for a, um, a bright, ultra short throw projector to utilize in a living room or dining room and your budget is you know maybe under three thousand dollars the new vava chroma may be a solution for you so phil thank you for coming and talking to us today you're welcome so take care and we will talk to you soon